Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video series, I'm going to bring to you new and emerging technologies that should hopefully make our jobs easier as developers and engineers when we work on the modern cloud data platform. And in this short video, I'm going to bring to you a new technology which I found out about two months ago, which aims to bring the DevOps principles from the software world into the data world. And that product is called Data Ops, and it aims to strike a balance between developer agility and governance. So it solves a real world problem. And it might just be the next big thing. So what exactly is Data Ops and what does it help us to do? Well, in my day job as a consultant, helping my customers get the most out of their modern data platforms, a lot of those customers are typically moving from on-premise, legacy technology, to the cloud for the first time. And so let's say they introduce a new data platform, for example, Snowflake. They then need to work out how they get data onto that system and deal with different kinds of frequencies that they may not have been used to in their previous environment. So we could have event streaming data, we could have micro batches, and we could have more traditional batch processes, all loading data onto Snowflake. Now straight away then, those same customers need to consider, okay, how are we gonna do that? Do we use a data loader, something like Fivetran, something like Matillion's data loader tool to get the data on to Snowflake and then trigger our transformations using something like DBT? Do we use a more traditional approach in terms of an ETL tool or ELT as we now call it because of pushing down the logic and leveraging the scalability of the data platform? And that might look like Matillion's ETL product. So now we've got our data on Snowflake, we're able to apply transformations and get it into a format that's easily digestible and usable for our data consumers. But now we need to govern that data. So now we're introducing tools like Alation, for example, or Atlan. We also need to orchestrate all those processes and tie them all together. Potentially, we may be using something like Airflow to do that. And then on the consumption side of things, we may have Power BI, Tableau, Looker from a data visualization standpoint, or we may have Data IQ or Data Robot to cover our AI ML use cases. So quite quickly now, you can see that the ecosystem of tools that we might need when moving from on-premise to the cloud suddenly becomes very complicated. And these customers who are trying to get up to speed quickly are not just learning the cloud, but adapting their processes to make it fit in with all these different technologies. So then the question comes, well, how can we tie all of this together? How can we orchestrate all of these tasks? How can we capture all of the login from the different tools that make up our ecosystem effectively? How can we embed automated testing as part of this? And in the meantime, the business is still running, so we need to continue delivering value of a high quality in a reasonable amount of time, ideally much faster than we were doing with the on-premise technologies. So data ops as a concept then aims to improve collaboration between teams working on data that includes the engineers, the providers of data and the data consumers. It aims to improve the quality of code pushed into production by automating testing and really improving the agility and efficiency around picking up defects in the code early on in the development lifecycle. As part of leveraging automation and repeatable tasks, then as a byproduct, we're aiming to get a faster speed to market or time to value, able to deliver data products faster to the organization. So it should be more efficient, it should be, have better quality, and it should remove a lot of complexities. So this is the real world problem that a lot of teams face, a lot of teams and clients I work with are dealing with on a daily basis. And this is where data ops as the product comes into play. It's built on top of Snowflake and it helps you build, test and deploy applications and data products on top of Snowflake. Now it leverages the power of Snowflake behind the scenes but it also integrates those ingestion and data quality tools that I mentioned earlier, tools like Matillion, Fivetran, Stitch Informatica, and many others. On the consumption side, and for governance and data management, then you've got connectors with Alation and Data IQ and Calibra. So it aims to tie not only the automation, but also how to orchestrate all those different independent technologies together make that login transparent and visible, and then wrap automated testing around it. 
So we can then use and interact with data ops at a high level all the way through the development lifecycle and almost take that software development DevOps approach and apply it really effectively and seamlessly to the data world. So I'm really excited about this product because it seems to solve a real world problem that's been around for a while. And there's been a number of different approaches in the past to bring this together, but this is one of the more seamless approaches I've seen so far. And that's why I'm keen to kind of bring it to your attention. And back in February of 2022 this year that I'm recording this video, um, DataOps is based in London and it secured 10.3 million US dollars of seed funding um, from venture capitalists, but also from Snowflake Ventures. Now, Snowflake Ventures, if you're not aware, of Snowflake's investment business unit. It's really interesting to see the moves that they make in the market because it does highlight the areas where they see real value in those products, which are growing really quickly. Alation is one of them, DBT is another, and I've talked about DBT in a previous video, um, which a lot of you guys seem to get a lot of value of. So I'll put a link at the top here if you're interested in finding out more about that. So let's get into a little bit more detail then. So this is the kind of legacy infrastructure and problems that I was just describing that some of my clients have and are moving from this kind of world into the cloud. So this is your kind of classic traditional BI data warehouse setup, range of data sources and ETL typically run on batch into your um, enterprise data warehouse, which is usually separate with data marts around different subject areas or business units, and then reports off the back of that. So everything's on premise, it's hard to scale. Um, if you need to scale, then that takes time because you're actually requesting physical kit in many cases. So it's slow to scale and just difficult to work on in comparison to the cloud. So DataOps then aims to come in and help leverage your cloud platform technology with the aim of getting the most value out of it for your business. So from an agility perspective, implement and standardize repeatable software processes and embedding those as part of your operational processes will improve your code quality and also speed up the rate of development. The orchestration element, this is what I mentioned when you're going to have a range of tools in the ecosystem, which you all need to link and tie together and be able to trigger different jobs at different times. So for example, if you've got a data loading tool onboarding data onto your Snowflake environment, you want to wait until that is completed or certainly the core data is, is on there before triggering your data transformation jobs. Automated testing and ensure that new code is tested comprehensively and, and also to implement regression testing to make sure that no new code changes have broken anything that exists in your production environment. And then clear direction, so a simple, clear approach of how you need to develop and take code and data products through that development lifecycle in a consistent way across all the people who are working on building these data products within your team. So let's just cover some of those capabilities at a high level and what they might look like in the tool. My plan is, is to do a follow-up video or two to go through some of the technical details. This is quite a high level overview in this video just to give you a flavor of what DataOps is, what problem it solves and how it goes about that. This is a pipeline and this is how it automates particular activities and tasks. Behind the scenes, DataOps as a product leverages the DB Core engine. So you won't really necessarily be writing SQL directly in to here anymore into the IDE for DataOps. You'd be writing YAML files and maybe some Jinja code templates as well. And if you want to find out more about that, you can check out my playlist on DBT for more information about how that works. And I'll, like I say, I'll get into more detail around the technicalities in a subsequent video specific to data ops. But here we can see we're initializing the pipeline. We're converting some DDLs, setting up our Snowflake environment, and then deploying some code to that environment. Moving on to the orchestration piece of the pipeline, you can see now we're able to trigger talent jobs from within data ops. So again, wrapping up that orchestration and logging and sequencing those dependencies appropriately and then embedding and baking in automated testing. So once we've loaded our data, let's check some high level counts. Let's log what they look like and we can potentially trigger other mechanisms off the back of that. And you can see here we're pushing out 
new metadata into Calibra to keep our data catalogs up to date so our data consumers know what data they're looking at. So all encompassing and it brings everything together neatly within the one tool. Data Ops has already been deployed for a company called Roche Diagnostics. They're part of a multinational healthcare company called Roche. And they recently implemented Data Ops to help support developers within the decentralized domain teams environment to build data products using Snowflake. Here they use Data Mesh. I'm not gonna get into the concept about Data Mesh now, that's a whole different discussion. Um, but that's what Roche were using and Data Ops are big advocates of the Data Mesh architecture approach. And what Data Ops looked to do was to provide that full end-to-end -end orchestration experience to enable and unlock that agility. So that meant the data product teams sitting out in the business across different data domains could get hold of the data they needed, build data products faster and more effectively, but they didn't need to compromise on data governance and security because the tried and tested software engineering best practices were baked into the development lifecycle, supported by Datrops as a product. And this at a high level was how they kind of went about that, moving code through various Snowflake environments. And you can see here we've got Snowflake, Matillion, DBT, Soda and Data IQ and Calibra, making up those entire pipelines between each environment. So by the time it reaches production, we've got a good level of confidence around our code quality. We've flushed out any kind of bugs as well, and we can migrate through environments. Again, on the technical level behind the scenes, Data Ops is, is picking up and really leveraging some of the Snowflake out of the box functionality, like zero copy cloning, for example, to create environments behind the scenes for you. You don't necessarily need to go in and touch Snowflake to do that. Data Ops will do that and handle that for you as part of your development lifecycle. To finish up, on that particular case study with Roche and their data mesh set up over data ops and Snowflake, this is some of the highlights from that particular case study. Um, the key ones I would just want to call out here is the 120 releases each month now, which was in comparison to just one release every three months. That in, in a large part was moving to this new way of working, implementing data ops as a process with the tool underneath that on top of Snowflake. The other one I want to mention is reducing the minimal viable product time, the MVP time, to six to eight weeks from six months. So these metrics on the screen give you a flavor of where you can really kind of move the needle for your own organization, especially if you're coming from that on-premise legacy technology world using a typical more waterfall-based development lifecycle with limited automation. So I hope you find that video useful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, please share it with your colleagues as well if you think they'll benefit from it. More videos coming soon. I also wanted to let you know about our Master and Snowflake program with myself that we run and it's, it's an exclusive signature program to help you master Snowflake and learn how to design, implement and scale solutions in the cloud. And I've designed this program specifically for those people who have either scratched the surface using Snowflake or who are stuck working with legacy on-premise technologies and haven't been invested in by their companies and have fallen behind in their career. And what I've done is packaged up my knowledge and experience of working with Snowflake since 2017 and learning how to package up Snowflake's out-of-the-box capabilities in a way where you can apply them in the real world to address common challenges. So this program isn't about theory. Of course, I need to introduce you to the concepts if you're new to Snowflake, and many of my members are, but it's really about introducing the theory and then in practice, how you apply those in the real world. I've been through the pain of understanding what works and what doesn't. Now I've got a formula or a set of recipes, if you like, that show you how to do that. So the Master in Snowflake program includes in-depth, on-demand video course content that I've created they all include practical hands-on demos. I provide access to all the code, templates, and files that I use as part of those demos. So you can download them and use them freely. You may want to use them in your day-to-day -day work. You may want to take them and customize them and use them as a starting point. All members on the program get exclusive access to a members-only group where everybody can help each other out and share their knowledge and best practice and get expert advice. Finally, I also carry out a group 60-minute coaching call with 
all the members, totally optional, where you can ask me anything about Snowflake, data analytics, data strategy, data architecture, you name it, um, interview advice, and I can help you and give my um, input and help and support and guidance around that. Finally, you'll get lifetime access to all future updates. Snowflake's changing and evolving. There's new features and releases every week, and you'll continue to benefit from those updates as well. At a high level, there's 10 modules. This is what we cover, everything ranging from the Snowflake architecture to getting data into Snowflake. And then once you've got data, how do you effectively use it, secure it, share it, and work with it to ensure that you get the maximum value from your Snowflake implementation? If you're interested, I've included the application link in the video description below. If this sounds like the thing that you're looking for and you want to supercharge your career, and if you're ready to take the ultimate step, I'd really encourage you to fill out the application form below.